Hello. Hi, so, okay, so it's been a week since I last saw you, and I've changed a lot then. You know, how you change in a matter of time. You know how time, uh, you know, it, like in a, in a certain amount of days, you're not the same person because time moves and then you change. So, yeah. When you change because a certain amount of days and time passes, like a week, then you are changed and you're better. I'm better than I was a week ago, okay? So let's talk about Jesus. Yes, that's right. I'm a Christian now. That's why I'm making less sense than usual. Anyway, we're going to talk about God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus and their magical threesome. I'm going to just get right into this. This has nothing to do with Christianity. I just felt like saying that. Um, <laughs> I hope it didn't offend anybody. Um, we often overwork ourselves and overstep boundaries out of fear. Okay, so think about someone... I'm just getting right into this. Think about someone... I'm going to burp. I feel it coming. Am I going to lose it? <clears throat> I didn't lose it. Sorry. I know it's embarrassing, but I don't I do not do that. Anyway, I, I don't do embarrassment. That's what I meant. So, yeah, you're like freaking yourself out, and you're like, oh, I want to do this, I don't want to do that. And I'm like, what, you know, uh, do, do I do this, and how do I do that? You know, we freak ourselves out. But we sometimes don't realize we're doing it. There's the overt ones who clearly have anxiety, and then there's the ones who just really press it all down, and they just kind of, they, they, they've burned out, basically, and, um, and that can show itself in a number of ways, but I think it really, everyone's kind of in one of those two states for the most part, so you could think about someone who maybe is very, on a surface level, burned out, like, they just don't care about anything anymore, and they're just kind of, they've just given up. And then there's the ones who just don't think about it. They've given up, but they won't tell you that they've given up because they don't even want to admit that. So they just kind of go on and on and on and on. And, uh, and then you just have to deal with them being kind of separate from reality. And that's a scary type of person because those, those ones are everywhere. They're floating around all over the place. They don't know what they're doing or why they're doing it or where they're going or what's happening, but they're doing it anyway. And... Uh, these are also the types of people who aren't really going to stop and say, did I really want to say that? Did I really mean to do that? Or would I be more proud of myself if I did that a little differently? And, and they're never going to do that. Which is really just like, come on. I mean, what, like, do you really want to not examine anything you've ever done? And you might remember these people as rude. But I think something you need to ask yourself is, would someone want to be friends with me? after seeing me in some type of public interaction. And then you know which category you fall into. Um, <laughs> anyway, you also overstep boundaries. And that doesn't just mean, you know, someone says, don't do this, and then you do it. it overstepping boundaries is when you kind of step out of your own lane and you start involving yourself in other people's business. And that can mean even mentally you're worrying about things that have nothing to do with you. You're trying to control things that you have no control over, which is the title of the video, Let Go, Let God. And I'm going to explain that later. But um, you really have to catch yourself doing this and say, okay, why am I worrying about this thing that has nothing to do with me? Why am I not focusing on my own stuff, and I'm instead violating b boundaries. Where is that coming from? Well, it's coming from fear. And the only way around this is to replace that fear with faith. So I guess that's kind of why I had to make a Christianity joke at the beginning, although it really didn't feel like a joke. It just felt like it just happened. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, but I guess, yeah, it's, it's a little easier for me to bring comedy into something that is generally thought of as it's easy to mock because some of the things that I'm going to be saying, like this next line, for example, channel the light and let it empower you. You may be thinking, what is the light? Or you may think that you have some idea already of what it is and you, you have a, 
you either like it or you don't like it, but I'm just gonna have you reevaluate and just say, okay, maybe I don't know what the light is. So let's just hear this kid out, all right? I'm not a kid, I'm 20 years old. But for, you know, let, let me refer to myself as a kid when I want to. Um, anyway, to replace that fear with faith, faith is a lot of things. Faith, it can be, uh, th there's a lot of words that I could use synonymously in this situation that would convey the same meaning, but maybe not be as clear as faith, which is why I picked the word faith. And hey, fear and faith both start with an F, so they're connected in some way. But what is faith? Faith is when you you maybe want to start thinking about something that has nothing to do with you, stepping out of a boundary, and you instead just say, hold on, I'm going to just trust that I'm part of a bigger system, the universe is all connected, and I'm just part of it, and I don't have to take care of everyone and everything, I just have to take care of myself. And um, I'll leave that up to the universe to take care of that person and their their karma. It's not mine to deal with. And then you suddenly feel lighter and like you just, you know, dropped a load of whatever you were carrying that wasn't yours to carry. So that's another form of how we overwork ourselves. It's kind of the same thing. But overworking yourself can be um, a bunch of different things too. And you have to remember, I'm going to just continue reading because what I'm about to say is probably something that's already written here. So, security is an illusion. The only time you're truly secure is when you're living in faith. Everything else is temporary and can be lost as suddenly as it can be gained. Never sacrifice your faith for the illusion of security. Your peace and self-respect must always take priority. We don't always know what we want. Our emotions are fickle and hard to read. Just remember that you'd be nothing without you. Okay, so basically, um, security is an illusion. What that means is that think about like all these things that you worry yourself over, that you overwork yourself for. Maybe it's literally work. Maybe you're at a job and you're you're super stressed about keeping your hours up or trying to make money or make ends meet, whatever it is, and you're in a situation where you're trying really hard just to get something done, but it's it's stressing you out, it's 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 cross it you're letting your boundaries get crossed. You're not overstepping boundaries, but you're you're taking down your own boundaries, which is um just as problematic because you matter just as much as anybody else. And um when you are basically sacrificing your peace, your inner peace, and or your self-respect in favor of keeping this job or making ends meet or whatever it is, you really have to ask yourself, where is your faith in some type of higher order? And think about the way that you could just let go of that for a little bit and say, what actually matters, what's actually important to me. And then just trust that the pieces will fall into place if you're willing to work with it, if you're willing to stay in that faith and listen to your gut, trust what you know is right and wh where your values are and step in the direction that feels right for you while maintaining self-respect and, and maintaining your peace. And trust that you can continue to make ends meet and continue to get where you need to be in life while also valuing those things. Those things never need to be put aside. They can remain at the forefront and you can still get where you need to be. That's super important to keep in mind. And it's not easy because we have a ton of things that get in the way, like trauma and all sorts of versions of that, like not extreme trauma, like somebody hurt you or anything, but just things that were taught, things that were told, ways that were made to think, and we have to learn to unlearn this and rewire our brains so that we are able to learn new information, because the way that we're taught to learn is not productive. It's it's just sort of, it teaches us to value work over our, our own, ourselves, and that's not good, obviously, and uh, if you let it, if you let it overwork you, you're going to get hurt. So... Another area this comes up is relationships, friendships, 
where you keep sacrificing um, stuff that would make you feel more comfortable in favor of the other person because you think you need that relationship to work out or you think that friendship or that maybe it's a relationship with family, you think it's just too important to risk damaging it so you you shut your mouth. You don't say what you actually want to say. You don't say what you feel. And you don't really do what you feel. And you're sort of betraying yourself in that moment and telling yourself that it's okay. And it's it's not. It's never okay to do that to yourself. And you have to trust that if you do stand up for yourself, the universe will be backing you up and supporting you and making sure that everything is working out the way it's supposed to. You don't get punished for that. And... That's really what I mean by faith. A lot of people don't think that far ahead. They have a hard time settling into that. And like I said, it's because of things that we're taught. And I have just as much a hard time with it as anyone. But that's why I'm talking about it this week. Because it, it's been on my mind a lot this week. And, um, you know, when something is on your mind, I think it's for a reason. And I, I'm doing these videos. I figure I might as well do what the title says and let go, let God, instead of trying to organize some type of setup for the videos, I'll just kind of do whatever I feel like doing, and it'll just turn out well if it's meant to. I do overthink these, I think, and I think it makes them longer than they need to be, and less interesting than they could be, and I don't want to lose your interest. I think it, I think that's, that's a stupid thing to do. So I already read everything here, so I'm really just elaborating on it at this point, and that's not going to take too much longer, so this might be my shortest video, which is a good thing, because it's, it's worth watching, and I think the shorter the video, the more likely you are to want to watch it. And this one's worth watching. This one's important. So, um, sorry, I'm just very excited. So, anyway, yeah, everything else is temporary and can be lost as suddenly as it can be gained. Think about that job that you're trying to hold on to. Think about how much you're sacrificing just to keep it, and think about the fact that literally anything could happen and you could just lose it in a day. Think about how you could suddenly gain a new job in a day. Opportunities are always right around the corner, and you don't see them until they come up. You could win the lottery, you could, like, literally anything could happen. But because anything could happen, you have to trust that the things that are meant to happen for you will happen if you if you stay in the light and continue respecting yourself. And that's what the light is. The light is sort of the op it's the opposite of the dark. The dark represents fear and chaos and not truth, like delusion. And uh, when you are feeding dark energy, what's basically happening is you're you're separating from your faith and you're you're going into this fear mode of like, but what if this happens and what if that happens? And it's all it's all just nonsense. It's all meaningless. There's no truth in any of these worries that you're having. But as you feed this dark energy, it takes a hold of you because your energy and you can be manipulated by positive and negative energy just as anything can. And if you are not mindful, if you're not controlling your thoughts, you are going to get taken over by all sorts of other things floating around you that you're not even aware of. So you have to pay attention, and you have to keep your wits about you. And the best way to do that is to feed light energy, which is faith, positivity, um, health, love, unconditional love. And by unconditional, I wish that that didn't have such um, a negative ring to it, but people hear unconditional love and they're immediately thinking of someone who doesn't have boundaries. But that is not at all the same thing. In fact, people who don't have boundaries could not be farther from unconditional love. Further. Fun fact. Further represents metaphorical distance, whereas farther represents physical, literal distance. So this phone is farther away from me but um, my thoughts are further away from me. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? A lot of people don't know the difference. People just use further and farther interchangeably, but they actually have a separate definition. Um, just like there are some words that are different based on the country. There's the American pronunciation, and then there's the, the like, you know, preferred in other countries, like toward and towards. Like, people don't know that. Toward is generally preferred in the US, and towards is preferred elsewhere or in the UK, I'm not sure if it's just the UK or anywhere else, but I, 
I learn these things because I like English and I'm a writer, so I, I, I'm a little bit of a grammar nerd. Um, so these are just interesting facts a lot of people don't know. But um, I think if you focus on being grammatically correct, it says that you really put thought and care into what you say, and it makes me respect you because it tells me that you respect yourself. And that's, to me, the only way you're going to earn my respect is if you respect yourself. If I don't think you respect yourself, it's, it's impossible for me to respect you. It would just be me lying. I would only be able to respect parts of you. Like, you know, I could respect that you did your makeup even though you did it for the wrong reasons. I don't know. Does, does that... I hope I'm making sense. I think I am. I'm, I'm making sense. If, you, if, you, if I'm not making sense, though, you have the comment section. You always have the comment section. Anyway, um, we don't always know what we want. We don't really realize how fickle our emotions are. We think we may, we may want something, whether it's a long-term thing or even just in the moment, and you don't realize how quickly it can change once you realize that it doesn't matter anymore. Like, there are plenty of things that I used to want that I still want, and there are also plenty of things that I thought for sure I wanted, and then I was like, actually, I'd be fine without it. It doesn't matter. And then I realized I wanted something else, something that was even better that I didn't think of. So you just have to be open to that and realize that the only thing you really know is that you know nothing. And um, that the only thing that really matters is how you treat yourself and how you treat other people. And that is a reflection of who you are. Because if you're not treating other people with kindness, you're not really being yourself. And the reason for that is that you would never want to do that. You have nothing to gain from doing that except feeding your fears, which is why I know you're not being yourself, because I cannot think of a non-fear-based reason to hurt another person and not acknowledge it, not apologize, not own up to it in any way. And I work in retail. I see tons of rude people all day. And I know that these people never look back on that and say, could I have treated that person a little bit better? Because they don't think of me as a person, they just think of me as a being that provides a service, and if I don't provide that service to their satisfaction, then they really don't see me as a human. But they don't see me as a human either way. Well, they see me as a human, they don't see me as a person. They don't see me as someone who's just like them, someone who's just as capable of going through as much as what they do, because they just think the world revolves around them. And this is such a popular mentality, people don't even realize. And what, you know, when you do that, I don't look at you and say, man, I'd love to get to know that person. I'd love to be friends with that person. And do you really want to leave people thinking that about you? Do you really want to leave people thinking that they would never want to be friends with you? Because what kind of a person does that? Like, people don't think about what that says about them. And all it really says is that you're going to end up alone and I don't think anybody really wants to just be isolated in the world. I think there are people who value their alone time because they need to be away from other energies and they understand that people are kind of, excuse me, kind of chaotic and out of control and they need to separate from that to, excuse me again, to take care of themselves. And um, that's important. That's a good thing to do for sure. But... You know, when you, um, when you separate from other people and you're, you're alone, you're kind of like in a crazy world just being with yourself, which is as sane as it gets. And then you go back out into the world because you're not here to just hide forever. Um, even though that, that would be nice, if you were here to just hide, you wouldn't even be here at all. You're alive for a reason. And that's something a lot of people seem to forget. And I am going to do a video on suicide. Last week I talked about death, but suicide deserves to be its own video because that's like a whole thing. So uh, I'm going to get into that eventually. If anybody watching this has ever thought about it or doesn't really think that there is that good of a reason to stay alive, um, definitely tune in for that video. I might just do it next week to get it over with. Um, and that that's going to be good because it's important and it definitely needs to be talked about. But um, for those of you who do think that there is a reason to live and don't have any arguments to what I've been saying, then just keep in mind that 
it's okay to need time alone, but we generally don't want to be alone because we're all connected. So when you isolate yourself, not just by being alone, having friends but not being around them all the time, but by not really having any real friend friends or real connections with people, all your friendships are surface level, they're just as closed off as you are, and there's no real deep connection, there's no being vulnerable with each other, and then you never have to go deep or examine yourself, and you shy away from people who would bring that out of you, who would force you to examine yourself, and you just hang around people who aren't really going to challenge you, and you call it friendship, but it's not friendship. What it is is toxic, and then you all just go out into the world and people like me have to deal with you. So, <sighs> yeah, I'm pretty, like, non-confrontational when it comes to being in an employee uniform, representing a company. But if I don't have some company representation on me, and it's just me, I will be confrontational. I won't be violent unless you are violent, and then... The way I handle that is just by putting an end to it as quick as possible. I'm not interested in engaging in some drawn-out fight where people have bruises and blood everywhere. Like, I want to end it as quick as it starts. So if you get physical with me, I don't underestimate me. That's actually my advantage, that I don't look like I can defend myself, because I actually can. And um, that just gives me an extra leg up that you wouldn't know it from looking at me. But luckily, no one's ever tried to be physical with me. And I'm pretty good at avoiding it because I know how not to let it escalate to that point. Although there are some people where there's just nothing you can do. They're, they're determined to go there. But um, I've been lucky to avoid those people so far. Because I'm not interested in that kind of confrontation. But if you want to be an asshole to me, and I'm free to say whatever I want, believe me, you're going to hear some things. And it's not always going to be what you want to hear. Because, honestly, I've talked about this in one of my videos from a couple weeks ago. Um, it might have been the first one or the second one, but people, people need to understand that when you are, like, treating a kid like they're, they're messing up, you're, what you're doing, and this is part of the, the topic, because this is the reason, one of the main reasons why people end up in situations where they have kind of lost touch with their faith. Faith originally comes from your parents. You have to trust that your parents are going to meet your needs and worry for you. So you just have to worry about yourself and making sure they know what your needs are so they can help you. And you can listen to them and trust their guidance. But the problem is that parents are human and humans are all going through a trial where they're learning to control their thoughts and stay light instead of feeding dark energy, but we all have the ability to feed dark energy, and we don't usually take the time to be mindful, so we're often very chaotic and kind of bipolar in our energies, and we don't realize it. And I'm not saying everyone has bipolar disorder, that's definitely an actual disorder, but um, people, people don't take care of themselves energetically because they don't think about these things very often. They don't think about the energy that they're putting out, the energy that they're taking in. You wouldn't expect to eat 10 hamburgers and not gain any weight. You have to be careful about what you're putting in and what you're giving out. And um, people just aren't. So you end up in a situation where you're supposed to have parents who take care of you, but instead they just absolutely mess up on their part. And then you have to deal with that. And you can learn from that. You can think of that as an opportunity to have faith in the universe instead of human beings. Um, but it sucks if you have to learn that at such a young age. You're supposed to learn what it feels like to have faith in the universe by learning what it feels like to have faith in your parents first. And some people never get that luxury. Some people straight out of the womb are just stuck not knowing what faith even is like because they're left on their own for such a long time and they have to develop a bunch of very hard, like, survival tactics. But, um, it can always be overcome. You can always learn to let your guard down and learn to have faith instead for your own sake. It feels better that way. It feels more freeing. You feel trapped otherwise. You feel like you're stuck in a suit of armor and you can't really move or do anything. And you have to trust that it's okay to take it off. And um, But the reason that we don't trust that is because a lot of our parents um, and a lot of us who are parents just um, 
don't really treat kids like they're growing. They give kids the idea that if they aren't good enough, if they do something wrong, they're going to be punished. So they learn to think that way. They learn to try and respect authority and, and do things the way that they're supposed to do because they're afraid of getting punished. And of course, some of them rebel and blah, 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 but there's all sorts of consequences and things like this that, that make it hard for you to just not live in a state of fear. And then you don't have a good connection with your parents anymore because you think of them as the ones who are taking your freedom away and judging you and being harsh with you. And how, how many times do you hear a teacher say something to a little kid like, that's unacceptable behavior and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, do you ever hear people talking to adults like that? Because you should. The thing is that your brain is still developing up until you're 25 years old. And if you are past the age of 25, you really need, pe people need to put their foot down with you and just say, okay, this is just unacceptable. Just like, come on you're an adult, act like it. And you really need to not be wavering at all and saying that to someone. Just put your foot down and say, okay, are you an adult? Really? Okay, well then start acting like it because I'm seeing a toddler. And um, don't even get attached to how they react. Just treat them as if you would an actual toddler and stop treating toddlers that way. Instead, treat a toddler with respect, understand that they're growing and they are going to make mistakes. And don't tell them that their behavior is unacceptable in such an unforgiving way. They need to be forgiven. They need to understand that there is still unconditional love there. And you need to understand that if they feel loved and they trust you, then they'll trust you and they'll do what you need them to do. And, and you should always be able to explain it to them if they don't understand it. Never just say, but why do I have to do this? Because. That's not an answer. That's, that's just... It's, it's so lazy, but so many people do that. I had that done to me, and it, it just makes you feel like you're not respected. They're not treating you like a, a person who's trying to learn. And oftentimes kids are so neglected that the way they act, it doesn't even look like they're trying to learn. And then it almost makes it seem like the parents who are short with them are justified. But who let them get that way in the first place? It's your job to fix it. There's no excuse to treat them like you don't love them unconditionally. There's no excuse to be short with them. But when it's an adult, when it is a full-grown adult, and especially if it's a stranger, and they treat you like, like a child, they get impatient with you or rude, you have to just call them out and make them realize that what they're doing is childish, inappropriate, and unacceptable. And if they don't want to admit that, if they're going to continue to fight with you, they're just proving your point and you can just mind your own business because it's not your job to fix them, but it is your job to put your foot down and say what you're really thinking. And um, sometimes people just need to hear that. So I think I explained everything. I think that's kind of a good example of boundaries and everything. And um, if you want more information on this topic or a topic similar to this, um, there's a really good video that's longer um, but it's it's in a playlist that I have on my channel called Ivy Rivera Free Mini Classes, and the class is called Stay in Your Lane. You can probably just type in Ask Ivy Stay in Your Lane, and it should come up right away. And it's basically about how to set better boundaries and focus on your own life path. And it's it's basically talking about this, but just in, in greater detail and giving you some some advice on how to do it. So you don't have to watch that, but if, if you're interested, I think it would be, it would be worthwhile. So thank you for watching, um, and I'll see you next week for the suicide video, unless I do something else. I guess we'll find out in a week. Um, have a great day, or night, or morning, or whatever time it is when you're watching this, and leave a comment, and, uh, bye!